This is a lecture in a series covering first order systems. This is part five. And in this uh, short lecture, lecture, we're just going to look at um, uh, how we can determine the order of a circuit. So it's not always the number of capacitors or inductors that you have. So let me just draw a couple circuits and we'll, uh, we'll look at what the order of that circuit is. So here is a capacitor circuit or capacitor with a couple resistors. Okay, what is the order of this circuit? All right, well, there's one cap, so therefore it's first order. Okay, all right, how about if we have the same capacitor and now we add in, say, we put a capacitor over here. Okay, there are two caps in this circuit. And so this is second order. How about if we have this circuit here? Okay, there are two caps. But be careful, before you say it's second order, look at how these capacitors are connected. They are in parallel. Two caps in parallel. And so if they're in parallel, they're actually not two independent states. They share the same state, the same voltage. And so this is actually a first order circuit because what you could do is you could redraw this as a circuit with one cap where, sorry, where we have this equivalent capacitance is just equal to C1 plus C2. Okay. Uh, let's look at, uh, let's see here. Okay, here's another one. So here's a resistor, resistor, resistor. Capacitor, inductor, not inductor, resistor, and then capacitor. Okay, so we have a C1 and a C2. So there are two caps. Are they in series or in parallel? They're not in parallel, right? But they are actually in series. Now you might say, wait a minute, there's a resistor in between. Well, you could redraw this. Okay, you could redraw this part here as being resistance you could swap the resistor and the cap right because actually this resistor and the two caps are all in series so we could swap them and this right here is if this is C1 and C2 there's an equivalent capacitance equal to uh, when you can when you combine resistor capacitors in series they actually uh, have a well it's the inverse of the sum of the inverses Okay, it's just like paralleling resistors. It ends up being C1, C2 over C1 plus C2. So, because they're in series, okay, they don't share the same voltage. They might actually have different voltages, but their dV dTs are going to be the same, or their C dV dTs are going to be the same. So, um, this might be like um, if you have two springs, okay, and you tie the springs in parallel, okay? They share the same displacement, which might be like saying here, they, these, capacitance, these capacitors share the same charge flow. So if you deliver a coulomb of charge to one, there's also a coulomb of charge that's delivered to the other one because they're in series, okay? But the force that each spring exerts is not the same, but yet the total force is just the sum of the two. And here, the voltage across each capacitor would be different, perhaps, if they're different capacitor values uh, or if they have different initial conditions. However, they, uh, the total voltage across the capacitors is the sum of the two, just like the total force exerted by two springs in parallel is the sum of the two forces or the individual forces on those springs. So all that to say that if you have two caps in series, it is a first order circuit. Okay, and we could replace, in each one of these cases, we could replace the capacitor with an inductor and we would make the same conclusion. All right, let's look at one more example here. 
here's C1, C2, a, a voltage uh, V1, okay, and then R1, C3, and some current source. Okay, what is the order of this circuit? So let's label this is VC1. Say this is VC2. Okay. And notice that we have a loop here that involves two capacitors and a voltage source. So if we were to write KVL around this loop, KC, KVL, right? We have minus VC1, so this is KVL, minus VC1 plus VC2 plus V1. Okay, so we can write, therefore, VC1 is equal to VC2 plus V1. If we look at DVC1, DT, take the derivative, we'd have DVC2, DT, plus the derivative of V1, okay, which is going to be zero if uh, this is a constant. Okay, so therefore we can say that VC1 dot is equal to VC2 dot. So the time rate of change of these voltages is going to be the same. And because of that, uh, those two capacitors will actually act as one single state. Okay, they may have an offset voltage, they will, the offset voltage between them will be whatever V1 is. But if uh, the voltage on capacitor 1 increases by a volt, then the capacitor across uh, capacitor 2, voltage across capacitor 2 will increase by 1 volt as well. So we have three caps, okay, but we have two of them, C1 and C2, actually share the same state. And then the third capacitor is not uh, connected in parallel with them. It's got a resistor in between them. So this will actually have, um, we would say, therefore, the circuit has two states. Two states. Okay. One due to C1 and C2 working together, and one due to C3.